Well, good morning, church. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, we thank you that this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you so much for Moore's Chapel, for this uh, church that has grown up people in the faith for years um, and for years to come. We thank you for each person and family here represented. God, I just pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us. Open our hearts and our minds for all that you have for us as we receive your word and your message for each and every one of us. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so as I mentioned last week, I felt led to kick off my preaching with reflections on Moore's Chapel's mission statement. My heart's desire is to understand it because it's part of who you are and to have it become part of us, Dave and I, and our family, since we are now part of you. The mission statement has four parts. They're listed in your bulletin. If you could pull that out, let's read them together. The first one, walking, waking to the need of Jesus in the lives of all, walking in the word of God, witnessing for Christ in thought, speech, and action, and winning the world for Jesus Christ by having lives changed through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So mission mission statements indicate why we exist, and they give us our marching orders. Last week, we focused on waking up to the reality that we all need Jesus, you and I, and everyone else. Did anyone experience a greater awareness of their need for Jesus this past week in your own life or the lives of those around you? Did anyone notice any greater awareness? Thank you, Dave. (laughs) He's supposed to raise his hand, right? So um, anyway, laughter is good for the soul. Um, Today we want to focus on the second part of that mission statement, walking in the word of God. And we will look at both why it's important for us to read and reflect on the Bible and how to get some tips on how to get the most out of it. So first, I love the imagery of walking. I remember times when I would go through Valley Garden Park outside of Greenville, Delaware, when I lived in northern Newcastle County. It was one of my favorite parks to go to. I love spending time there, walking through the paths, exploring the park, and reflecting on life. Going gave me an opportunity to slow down, take in the scenery, and walk at a relaxed, unhurried pace. You know, I wasn't power walking, I wasn't jogging, I wasn't exercising, which are all of the types of walks I do now. I really miss those leisurely walks through the park. When we walk, we have an opportunity to stop, notice, and reflect on what we feel, hear, see, and smell. Things like a gentle breeze that we might feel, the warmth of the sun on our skin, the sound of water flowing in a stream, the wildlife, the birds, the animals, the deer, the scents of various plants and flowers. We might see two birds sitting in a tree next to each other, or a newborn fawn. You know, I love seeing the newborn baby deer with the white spots and so adorable. We might see a flower that grabs our attention. Now, when I've walked through this park and other parks, I've seen all these things and so much more. However, if we go too fast, we miss many of these gems. You know, if I was power walking or jogging, I might have even scared the deer and it would have ran away. We miss many of these gems if we go too fast. The same can happen if we speed read through the Bible or read it to merely check it off our spiritual to-do list. When we do that, we might miss 
the hidden gems that God has for each and every one of us. So to get the most out of the Bible, we want to walk in the Word of God. We want to read it in an unhurried, undistracted way so that we can give it our entire focus, our whole mind, body, heart, and spirit. It doesn't matter if it's for 10 minutes or an hour. It's similar to how when we meet with a friend, you know, we tune out the other distractions and we pay attention to what the other person is saying. Reading and reflecting on scripture helps us grow and it helps us to get to know the author. It helps us to get closer to um, God. Now, reading and reflecting on scripture is also the number one thing that helps people grow spiritually no matter where they are. Whether they are just getting to know or exploring who Jesus is, to the new believer, to someone who's close to Christ, or the fully devoted follower in Christ, no matter where you are on your journey, reading and reflecting on scripture is the number one thing to help us grow. So do we want to grow spiritually? Yeah, I see some heads. Good. Well, if we want to, if we want to grow spiritually, read and reflect on the, ro- on, on the word. Hebrews 4, chapter, verse 12, tells us, For the word of God is alive and active. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the heart's the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The Bible contains wisdom, encouragement, comfort, and truth for every situation we will ever face. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 reminds us that all Scripture is God-breathed. It's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So we can say that it is our instruction book for life. An acronym for Bible, you might have heard this before, is Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. And it has so much more in it. So all scripture... From Genesis to Revelation and everything in between, is God breathed, it was recorded by people who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. When we read the word, let's be open and pay attention to what God is trying to teach us. You know, every time we open the word, it's an opportunity for God to teach us something. Or maybe we need a rebuke. You know, I know we don't like rebukes, but maybe sometimes we need a rebuke. A rebuke means to give strong correction. Or maybe we just need help to make some of those smaller corrections that train us in the way of righteousness and make our path straight. Many times when I pray, before I read the Bible, I I pray pretty much this verse. You know, God, help me, correct me, teach me, rebuke me. Um, I want to learn from you. Now, the only requirement for us is really to have a teachable spirit and a desire to learn God's ways so that the servant of God, you and I, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Greek word for good is agathos, which means something that is good, right, generous, what is better and useful. So what good work is God equipping you for right now? What good work is he equipping you for in your home, in your community, in your neighborhood, here at church? What good work? So this week I want to challenge all of us to think of a situation where we need wisdom, direction, or help. Does everybody need at least some wisdom, direction, or help in something? 
Amen, right. <laughs> We're breathing, we need God's wisdom and help. So this week, ask God to show us what we lack and to equip us for this good work in that particular area in our lives. Pick something that we would be willing to allow the light of God's word to train us in the way of righteousness. It could be a current situation that you're dealing with involving a family member, a friend, a coworker, or even someone here at church. It could be a character flaw that you have that you're aware of. I know we all have character flaws, me included. And um, so a character flaw that we're aware of that we're open to change. You know, we have to be open to change to be changed and transformed. It could be an old hurt, something that we're holding on to or someone that maybe we haven't been willing to completely forgive from our heart. Sometimes we hold on to resentment or bitterness and unforgiveness. So what is it for you that you would be willing to allow God's word to speak to you this week? Whatever that thing is, I encourage each one of us to seek God's will for the situation and the courage. It takes courage to do what is right. And if we're not willing, at least pray that we'll become willing to be willing, if that makes sense. This could be a great way to apply this scripture in our lives this week. You know, it's important when we hear the word that we also apply what it is teaching us. Is anyone willing to take on the challenge? I know Davis. <laughs> All right, a couple other people. That's good. All right, good, good, good. All right. <laughs> good job. Okay. If yes, look up and read passages that relate to that thing, that your situation that you have, and see what the good and better way is. Read how God would like you to handle that thing. If we seek God for help, we will find it. That is a promise. God says if we seek him, we will find him. So if we seek his wisdom, he will illuminate it. It might not come as quick as we want it, but it will come if we continue to seek. If you need help in any of this, please let me know. Now another scripture for us today is Psalm 119, 105, which tells us that your word, God's word, is a lamp for our feet and a light on our path. When we read and reflect on God's word, it really becomes a light, a lamp for our feet. It really becomes a light lighting up our path. It shows us which way to walk in. How many of us want direction or next steps in our lives? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, God's word, it's the power source. It's the power source that lights up our path. You know, at the last service I was saying, you know, I wish it, hand me my Bible, please, Dave. Thank you. You know, the Bible is something that, you know, God's word, if God's word is up here, you know, sometimes what we do, and I'm guilty of it too, is we bring it down here to our, under, our own understanding. So there's a gap, right, between what the word says and sometimes what we actually believe. So I want to encourage us to, you know, wherever we are, if there's something in here that we're holding on to, to say, okay, God, I don't know if I believe this completely yet, but help my unbelief. You know, let's not bring the word down to our own understanding. This is divinely inspired words from God. So when we read the word, it's like we've plugged into the electrical current that turns on the light of our spirit, our mind, our thoughts, our actions, and life. I don't know about you, but I want God to illuminate the way I am to go. You know, when we don't make regular time to read and reflect on scripture, it's like we have chosen to walk in a light 
that is fading by the minute. If we go many days without spending time in God's word, it's like we have chosen to blindly walk in the dark. You know, if God's word is what lights up our path and we don't read it, we're walking in the dark spiritually, so to speak. It's hard to work, walk without light. You know, and when we walk without light, you know what we're walking to? We're walking to Oprah Winfrey or the advice of our friends. And not that friends are, we want friends. But sometimes our friends don't give us godly wisdom either. What, they give us worldly wisdom. Well, we want God's wisdom. So the word, that's what the word has. It will illuminate our path. So read the Bible. Read the Bible. Reflect on the Bible. And as we read, ask the Holy Spirit living within us to illuminate verses that we need to hear for our lives today. You know, when we read and we ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate the word to us, it's a current word. It's a word for our lives today. Even though it was written, you know, a couple thousands of years ago, it's a current word for our life today. Remember, the word of God, it's alive, it's active, it has the power to change, heal, transform. And it happened to me this week three times. So the first time was last Sunday. My encouragement was a word found in Isaiah chapter 8. Not to fear people, but instead to fear the Lord. The second time came from Isaiah chapter 11. The word told me not to judge by what I might see and hear in the natural, but instead to see and hear with spiritual ears and eyes allowing myself to be guided by God's righteousness, justice, and faithfulness. You know, do you know that we have spiritual senses, spiritual eyes, and spiritual ears? So when we do that, we want to hear what, hear what is going on in the spiritual realm for us. Now, that was useful for me in a situation where I needed wisdom. And I still need wisdom in this area. The third time, my instruction came from Hebrews chapter 10, which gently reminded me that one of my roles as pastor is to prepare and equip the body of Christ for Jesus. You know, Jesus is coming back one day to get his church, and he wants us to be prepared and ready and equipped for him. Not only when he comes back, but now. He's here with us now. Jesus is, is alive so it's preparing us for the things that Jesus has for us to do before he comes back. My prayer is that I will be the pastor that God desires me to be. And I know that somewhere in that answering of that prayer, he will meet some of our desires, your desires, and mine. You know, it's amazing how many times this happens. When we read something, when we read the word, we read something that we need for the circumstances we're currently facing or about to face. God is lighting up our path. Many times what is illuminated for us also encourages others. As we continue to walk through the word, we will see new things that we didn't previously notice. This is just like when you walk through a park. We always find something new to see on the same old trails, right? We see new things on the same old trails. Have you ever read the same passage and gotten something new from it? Have you ever shared what you received from the word and how to encourage someone else? Yeah, it's a light for our path. So as for some practical helps to get the most out of the Bible, I want to encourage everyone, if you're not already, to start a reading plan that helps you walk through the Bible, the entire Bible. If you're not already in a daily habit of this, um, what I suggest is that you can make up your own plan. Um, you can simply read one chapter from the New Testament and one from the Old Testament. That's what John Wesley, who's the founder of Methodism, recommended for his people that he discipled. 
And if you do that, I would start maybe one chapter from Genesis and one chapter from Matthew. And it might take you 10 minutes to read that. It, it doesn't take a lot of time either. Um, it is important, though, that we begin to understand the whole counsel of God. Um, if we only read our favorite passages, we're missing out on so much more that the Bible has to offer. You know, that's why I love a reading plan that goes throughout the entire Bible. And if I had not been doing this reading plan, I would not have been reading Isaiah this week. You know, I love Isaiah, but sometimes... Isaiah is not one of my favorite books, but there's so much good stuff in here. So in John chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus is speaking, and he says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit will teach us. That's a promise. If you're open to the Holy Spirit and ask God to teach you before we read, the Holy Spirit will teach us. Um, in, your, in your bulletin, there is an insert called uh, the University of the Holy Spirit, if you can pull that out. We can all enroll in this school of the University of the Holy Spirit. I'll explain it. If you didn't get a copy of it, um, you can get one after the service or just let me know. So I've been using this method for over two years, and I've started and stopped stop the journaling piece, but I always start again, as this is how I hear from God the most. That's what I was doing earlier this week. I was journaling on this method, which you'll hear about in a moment. Um, I encourage you to follow these instructions or suggestions and encourage you to just try it. Just try it for um, uh, three weeks, you know to give it a fair shot. Um, God will speak to you. So to get enrolled, here's what we need to do. We need to, first of all, set, off, set aside time every day to listen to the Holy Spirit as we engage with God's Word. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to highlight some portion of the Scripture reading for that day. This will be the verse that kind of jumps off, at the, page, jumps off uh, the page to you. Or it might be the verse that you're just you know, I'm really led to that verse or drawn to it. As I mentioned earlier, read from both the Old and the New Testament. Um, Dave and I have a reading plan called the Life Journal Reading Plan that you can look up on uh, the Internet. It's uh, go to just Bible.com. There's even, I don't know how many of you have smartphones, but um, there's even an app that you can put on your phone or your computer or tablet or whatever to... Um, Keep track of a reading plan. And if reading the Bible is new for you and you're not in that habit, I would just encourage start reading the New Testament, one chapter a day. Uh, one chapter a day. And if you have questions, just ask. I'm sure there's tons of people here who would love to help, including myself. If you have a journal, um, Pull your journal out. If not, don't worry about it. A spiral notebook could, could work great. And follow the SOAP method listed below. And write a few sentences on each of the following. You know, writing it out really helps us reflect on the verse that jumps off the page, at least for me. Um, reflecting and meditating on God's word, it gets, us inside, it, gets it inside us. Um, so the first one is scripture. This will be the one verse that the Holy Spirit highlights for you as you read. And then the next one is observation. Jot down what you observe about this verse within its context. And don't worry about what you don't know about that particular verse. You know, ask God just the things that God's bringing to your attention that you notice. The Holy Spirit will reveal what you need to, what you need to see. And just jot down those things. And then think of what's the application. Write down any take-homes or personal applications, like where does this verse touch your life? And then finally, prayer. Uh, close your time with a prayer, asking God to make this learning come alive, make it come alive into your heart, because you know, otherwise if we just hear the word and we don't act on it, 
um, or allow it to transform us, it, it, it's kind of dead. And, you know, the word is alive. So let, let, it, let it come alive, come to life within you. So using this method could help us engage and receive fresh words from God on a regular basis. I believe in my heart of hearts that if you try this, um, God will encourage you and speak to your heart. If you have any questions, please ask. Now, I realize this method might not be for everyone, and that is okay, but um, we won't know unless we give it a try. I've had several people in the past that, you know, tried it, and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how God was speaking to me. We have nothing to lose by trying it, but we have, did I say that right? Yes, we have nothing to lose, but we have a lot to gain spiritually by trying it. So the big moment of the sermon, the so what, right? So what? What about you? Do you want to grow spiritually? Do you want God to illuminate your path? Will we allow the word to equip us for every good work? What will you commit to this week? Will we walk in the word of God? I sure hope so. You know, God went through a lot of trouble to get us this book. You know, the least we can do, right? Don't you think we should read it? Um, all right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, Thank you for your word found in scripture. Just as Jesus said, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus, we thank you that you are the word made flesh. Give us a hunger and a thirst for more of your word this week, Lord. Make us hungry and thirsty for more of you. Forgive us for those times when we have not sought your Counsel, forgive us for those times when we have not made the time to read your word, Lord. Help us this week as we go throughout our day to carve out time to spend with you, time that you enjoy when your children come and sit at your feet. Lord, I thank you for each and every family that's represented here. I just pray that you, um, I know you just love all of us so much. That's another reason why you gave us your word, because you love us so much. You want us to know you. So, Lord, just pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Meet us where we are. You know, at some point, we were all at a place where we were not engaging in your word, including me. I had never even read your word prior to 2004. So help us, teach us, as we go through our days and our weeks, walking in your word. And we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for all the things that you're doing and working in our lives. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.